looking at the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We we'll continue that here today, a, a little bit uh, on the lighter side here today. We're going to basically look at who the Holy Spirit is, and for the next two Sundays today, we're going to look at the personality of the Holy Spirit, and then next Sunday, Lord willing, we're going to look at the purpose of the Holy yeah, Spirit. Amen. Uh, but we're going away from the Book of Galatians for a while, believe it or not. I know it seems like we've been there forever. Uh, we're going to go back to the Gospels. Yes. And so if you have your Bibles this morning, and I trust that you do, I'd ask you to turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, Amen. and we're going to be reading verses 12 through 18. Yes. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 18. And when you get there, I'd ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word. Amen. <clears throat> John chapter 14, verses 12 through 18. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. Yeah. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, Amen. and shall be in you. Hallelujah. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Thank you Amen. Jesus. Let us pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this another day. Thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for this promise that we read about here today, Amen. that we're not alone. We have the Holy One indwelling within us, Amen. the Holy Spirit indwelling within us, and we thank you for that. And Father, as we come to this message and these messages on the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that we would learn more of that third person of the Holy Trinity that we would learn more of his personality, we would learn more of his purpose, we would learn more of his power, and that we would see his power in our lives. Bless in this service here today. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would be the preacher here today. Yeah, amen. Use this vessel of clay for your honor and glory, and take this message and seal it to our hearts and lives to better equip us to go out and to serve you in this lost and dying world. And we ask these things in Christ's name, and for his sake we do pray. Yeah. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <coughs> you know, as we look at this passage here today, I want to basically ask you some questions. And that is, do we in thought and attitude treat the Holy Spirit as a person? Uh, we should, because he is a person. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 16, and let me sh share this passage again. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Yeah. He did not say it. All right, some translations, and I know the King James Bible done this, in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it says the Spirit itself. That is not a proper translation, because the Holy Spirit is not an it. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. Right. And he is a very real person. Amen. Amen. And then in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, also, and the Bible says there in the King James, it says, but the Spirit itself. Once again, that is an improper translation. It should not be itself. It should be himself, because the Holy Spirit is not an it. Right. He is not a magical force that we can tap into. He is a person that is abiding within us. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so, do we in thought and attitude treat the Holy Spirit as a person? We should. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And do we regard the Holy Spirit as just as real of a person as Christ Jesus is? Right. We should. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. Folks, listen. In our text, Jesus said, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But now listen to what he says next. Yeah. But ye know him, yeah, for he dwelleth with you. Yeah. Uh, listen, the Holy Spirit had not yet come, but Jesus said he's dwelling with you. Right. Amen. You want to know why? Because Christ is, was as much the Holy Spirit yeah. as the Holy Spirit was of Christ. Right. And folks, listen, the Holy Spirit is as much of God as God is of the Holy Spirit. And folks, listen, there's three that bear a record in heaven. Yeah. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are, are one. one. 
Amen. And so do we really regard the Holy Spirit as just, a real, as just as real a person as Jesus Christ is and we should Amen. because he is. Right. Right. Amen. 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 And then another question. Do we regard him, the Holy Spirit, as just as loving, just as wise? This is something to think of. Just as tender, just as strong, just as faithful, and just as worthy of our confidence Love and surrender as Jesus is. Amen. We should. Yes. Amen. Folks, listen, do we think of him as a divine person that is always at our side? Amen. We should. That's right. Because Jesus said in John 14, 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. We have one that is at our side. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. Folks, listen, we have the Holy Trinity we have the Holy Spirit that is at our side. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so here today, the personalities of the Holy Spirit. And I want to share with you basically three things. And the first one is the characteristics. What is the characteristics of the Holy Spirit? What is the characteristic of His personality? What is the things that points that He is a person? He is not just a magical force. He is not an it. He is a person. Yeah. Uh, folks, listen, what is the things that tell us that he is a person? Well, here's his first characteristic trait. And I would encourage you to pick up an outline. Don't try to go and turn and look at these passages. I'm going to give you quite a lot of scripture here today. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, For what knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Listen to this. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, yeah. but the Spirit of God. Amen. In other words, knowledge is ascribed to the Holy Spirit. Folks, what did Jesus say in our text? Look in again in verse 16. He says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And then look in verse 17. Even, what's the word, church? The Spirit, the Spirit of, truth. of truth. Amen. In other words, knowledge is ascribed to the Holy Spirit. If we want knowledge, then who do we need to be yeah, asking for? Right. Amen. We need to be asking that the Holy Spirit, and I'm learning that, and I'm, I continue to learn that in my own ministry, that when things don't make sense and when things don't add up, you know what? You can't rely on what a man has taught you. Yeah. You've got to get along with God and That's say, Holy right. Spirit, teach me, because right. you're Amen. the one that God's in all truth. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, sad to say today, it seems like, that the Holy Spirit has been left out mm -hmm. in our churches. Uh, there is so much today, there is so much uh, standing on uh, the, the interpretation or standing on the ideology of man. Let me tell you something, folks. Man will steer you wrong, right. but God never will. Amen. 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 Uh, folks, right. listen, if all of us as ministers, let me just say this. If all of us as ministers was really surrendering to the will of the Holy Spirit, then you wouldn't be able to go from church to church and hear something being taught different. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Uh, folks, we today, myself included, we need to be surrendered to the will of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen. You see, the Bible says, and let me go back and share another passage with you, because understanding doctrine of the Holy Spirit is, is crucial for understanding truth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. The things that God has in store for us. Right. And a lot of people want to immediately take that passage and place it in heaven, but can I read on? But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. In other words, we can know a little of it down here. Amen. Amen. Right. And, yeah. and my friend, we can start experiencing a little heaven yeah, down here. Amen. Regardless of what's taking place, because... As we sung the song, we might not know about tomorrow, but thank God we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. And so as we look at this, it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. The Apostle Paul is saying, he's saying, we have received the spirit of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Folks, you want to know how to know the things that are freely given? 
Folks, listen, the only way to know it is to be taught by the Spirit. Yeah. And you know what is sad today, and as I was reading this passage, I'm thinking, there is so many churches throughout this world, and there are so many churches that are in this, in this nation, that they still don't understand and know the free, the things that are